behind me is a 1974 Sesta Model 150L. And this is the first episode of many where we take this plane from stock condition and convert it to a fully automated aircraft. What you're seeing here is the first version of a remotely piloted aircraft. We've retrofitted a Quad City Challenger to Ultralight with our hardware and software and successfully demonstrated automated taxiing, takeoff, and landing. Now it's time to move to version 2, and we've chosen the Cessna 150 as our next platform to modify. This is going to be an exciting video series that will interest a wide range of people. You could be an aviation geek, a mechanic, a roboticist, a software engineer, or somebody who simply wants to learn how things work. There is a place for you here, and you should tune in. I got the logbooks and I've got the pilot operating handbook, otherwise known as the POH. A few brief specs on the aircraft. Gross weight, so this is the maximum weight that the aircraft can fly at is 1,600 pounds. The top speed is 122 miles an hour, but typically cruises between 95 and 100 miles an hour on a good day. For range, you can expect roughly 475 miles or about five hours, correction four hours in endurance. Takeoff distance, uh, looking at about 1,300 feet, whereas the landing distance is around 1,000 feet. Now the stall speed, which is the minimum airspeed that the aircraft can fly at, is 55 miles an hour when the flaps are up and 48 miles an hour when the flaps are down. Typically the aircraft consumes about five gallons an hour. Compared to the other POHs I've seen, this one is extremely thin. I think it speaks to the simplicity of the aircraft. There's not much to it, honestly. It's a very simple, easy to fly plane. And that's why we chose it for this project. That's it for the POH. A bit of the history on the aircraft. I have two logbooks. I don't have anything prior to 1978. So we're missing about four years of history on this aircraft. All I know is that in 1978, it was bought from the Rock Cliff Flying Club in Ottawa. And for a number of decades, it went through the hands of multiple flight clubs, training what I assume is many, many pilots. Then, most recently, it went in the hands of my friend, who was at the airport, who we bought this plane from. He was using it to build time for his commercial pilot's license. He had done his 200 hours and wanted to move to a bigger aircraft. When I went to see it, it was a clean airframe. Honestly, really, really nice plane. For being the age that it is, the paint is good, the maintenance was done correctly. It's a great plane. I have no complaints. I've flown 25 hours on it so far. It feels slow, but, but it flies well. Uh, this aircraft is going to get it retrofitted in two stages. The first stage is going to be uh, a reduced scope in terms of modifications that will allow us to be able to fly the aircraft in the air with the autopilot, but the aircraft will not be able to do automated taxiing or takeoff and landing. The second phase is where we add the ability to do advanced maneuvers like taxiing, takeoff, landing, and uh, all the payloads required to be able to do detect and avoid in the air. For the people out there who want, you know, the expensive Garmin autopilots or the Dynon panels, uh, fuel injection, more horsepower in your engine, I suggest that you just go out there, find a plane that meets your requirements and buy that one. Because sometimes putting in all these modifications to a relatively cheap aircraft doesn't work out to your advantage. As you watch these videos, I know there's some of you in the comments that are gonna say, why are you doing this to 150? This is total overkill. And you're right, it is overkill. Keep in mind though that this is a R&D platform. We are doing this because we are developing an advanced autopilot and there's gonna be some modifications to it which don't make sense to the common pilot. And that's okay. We are fine with that. I know that this is going to cost a fair bit of money to do this conversion and that it is not a product that we intend to sell to the general public. Uh, it is an intermediate step to get us somewhere to a larger aircraft to be able to deliver cargo and goods and services to other civilian customers or defense, period.